Good evening, friends. I am so glad to be with you here on the International Women's um, Ministry page. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am so glad to take these few minutes with you on our normal Monday night teaching and prayer. So um, my name is Julie Fickus, and I am from Wilkesboro, North Carolina. I'm joining you from my home tonight, and I'm excited to share with you about hope and uh, we all need hope. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I know about me. And hope is something we really need and uh, that, that we can have from the Word of God. So grab your Bibles and we will get started here. But I just want to say a prayer as we get going and a special thank you to International Women's Ministries for hosting these every night to encourage women and to help wipe the tears of women all around the world. This is one of the ways that we reach out every single week. And we pray together, we stand together, and we're here together. So, Lord, we just thank you for this time tonight. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the opportunity to share the hope that is within us. Lord, you tell us to always be ready to share the hope that's in us. And so, Lord, I thank you, God, that you are our hope. You are the one in us. And I pray, Lord, you would strengthen women tonight. We pray that even through this broadcast, you would wipe the tears of women tonight, Lord, through us and through the words that are spoken. I ask, God, that you would bless each one watching, the women, the men watching tonight. Bless them, Lord, and allow us to meet with you. Thank you for the privilege of coming together, even through uh, Facebook and technology. We bless your name, Jesus. Amen. So grab your Bibles and turn to Proverbs chapter 13. And this is a very familiar verse, but I think it's something we all wrestle with. And each month I pray, what am I supposed to share? And this is the verse that came to my mind, that hope deferred makes the heart sick. It's found in Proverbs 13, verse 12, and I'm going to read 12 through 14. This is what it says, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. He who despises the word will be destroyed, but he who fears the commandment will be rewarded. The law of the wise is a fountain of life to turn one away from the snares of death. I am just blown away as I think about this. How often have we felt that hope deferred? We felt like we've been waiting for the promise forever. And is it ever going to come? That that deferred is to, to be delayed, to be pushed away. And um, so often when we have disappointments or discouragements in our life, it seems like, will this ever come to pass? I don't know about you. But I know in my life, there have been some seasons where I'm like, will this thing ever happen? I have all these promises from the Lord. I have all these promises from the word, but will it ever happen? And I'm, I'm wishing more than I'm hoping. <laughs> and I'm seeking my own strategies more than I'm seeking the Lord's strategies. But today, I think he wants to confirm to us what this means. And there is the promise of that the tree of life. We can eat of the tree of life. Hope deferred does make the heart sick. When we've been in those places where we've been discouraged or we've been disappointed or disappointed, it can cause dis-ease in our life and it can cause us to be set off. And, and we wonder, will this ever come to pass? And we've waited so long. Um, many of you know I shared recently I was remarried. I had been single for 12 years, and for 12 years I had thought I would get remarried someday, never knowing when that would be, but I never believed it would be 12 years. <laughs> if someone had told me in year one, um, you're going to get married, but it's going to be 12 years, I would have gone, no, thank you, I'll just... That's, that's not true. I remember I had a dream at year five, and the dream was that I was getting married 12 years later. And my notes in my journal from that dream were, this cannot be true. <laughs> I am not waiting 12 years to get married. That can't be the interpretation. There must be something else. Maybe it's already been 12 years. Is there some way to make it work? And we try to make things work instead of receiving God's word over our lives. <laughs> it was 12 years, my friends. <laughs> 
But no matter what, when we are in that place of deferred hope, where things are taking longer than we expect, what do we do in those moments? And what even is it that we're believing for or hoping for? What even is hope? Sometimes we often like think of hope like a wish, like it's a Christmas list or, or a birthday list of the things we want instead of the promises that we have from the word that are attached to a person whose name is Jesus. So the word hope in the Bible means an expectation or a joyful confidence. Are we joyfully confident about what the Lord has said? I think of 1 Corinthians 13 at the end of it. If you want to flip there in your Bible, we're going to flip all over tonight. So um, 1 Corinthians 13, 13, it says, And now abide faith, hope, and love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. Hope was there. Like, hope is one of those things that uh, we need. I mean, that's those are the three things that last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. But hope is so necessary. Hope is our confident, joyful expectation. And that is found in the person of Jesus Christ. The Blue Letter Bible, which is an online tool you can use, you can download to your phone, it talks about the word hope as an expectation of either good or evil it can be. But in the Christian sense, it's the joyful, confident expectation, even of our eternal salvation. We have a sure expectation or hope our salvation rests in Christ. We, our confidence, our joyful confidence is in Christ and Christ alone. I think of the song, um, in Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my source, something like that. You know the words. <laughs> he is it. Our confident expectation, we can have a hope in him. He is our sure foundation. And in Hebrews 6, you can flip over a little bit from where we were in 1 Corinthians into Hebrews 6. Oh, this is so good. Hebrews 6, um, starting in verse 19, it says, This hope we have as an anchor of our soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enters the presence with a capital P behind the veil where the forerunner has entered for us. Even Jesus, having become our high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. This is the hope. If you back it up a verse, um, I'm going to go back. Let's see. Um, to verse 18, that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. And this hope that we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, which enters the presence behind the veil where the forerunner has entered for, before us, even Jesus. We have hope. Hope is anchored to our soul. Your soul is your mind, your will, and emotions. We have an anchor for our mind, our will, and emotions. And it's called hope. And it's tethered. It's anchored to Jesus. It's anchored in going behind the veil. It's anchored in the presence of God, where the forerunner, Jesus Christ, our great high priest is. It is anchored to him and he is that sure foundation he is that solid rock and we can rest firmly on him our hope is not in our circumstances our hope is not even in ourselves but our hope is directly connected to jesus christ our great high priest who forever lives to make intercession for us so one of the things i like about hope is I love the word hope. And a long time ago, I heard this acronym for hope and I've applied it to the ministry that I work with and, and the prayer groups that I've, I've uh, hosted over the years and, and helped with. And hope stands for house of prayerful expectation. 
When God speaks to something to you behind the veil, in his presence, when you hear his voice, it births hope within you. It births a joyful confidence that what he said he's going to do, he is going to do. We have that confidence because it's not in us. It's not in our wishful thinking that I hope this thing is going to happen or I wish that this thing is going to happen. It is the confidence that the God of the universe, the Lord Jesus Christ, has spoken to us and has declared his word over us. And it's true. As I think back over Psalm 27, when I went through my divorce and in my years of singleness, I often came to Psalm 27. It's such an incredible song of seeking the Lord, that the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid when the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh and my enemies and my foes, they stumbled and they fell. Though an army encamped against me, my heart will not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. For one thing I have desired of the Lord, and that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. That's his presence, my friend. That's his presence to behold the beauty of the Lord, to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he will hide me in his pavilion, in the secret place of his tabernacle. He will hide me and he shall set me high upon a rock and my head will be lifted up above my enemies all around me and therefore i will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle i will sing yes i will sing praises to the lord <laughs> oh i'm gonna keep reading hear O lord when i cry with my voice have mercy also upon me and answer me i'm asking that for each one of you too. have mercy upon us O god and when you said that's the lord when the lord said seek my face my heart that's our soul my heart said to you your face lord i will seek do not hide your face from me do not turn your servant away in anger, for you have been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me, O God of my salvation. For when my father and my mother forsakes me, then the Lord will take care of me. Amen. Aren't you glad for the promises of the Lord? Again, we're in Psalm 27. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen up against me, and such breathe out violence. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, my friend. Oh, he will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. That's such a picture of hope. That's such a picture of having our expectation, our joyful confidence in Christ, our joyful confidence in him, that no matter what we're faced with, even when our mother and father would, uh, would turn their backs on us, God is with us. Even when the enemies rage against us, God is with us. We have this confidence that the one thing we have desired and seek is that we dwell in his house, beholding the Lord, inquiring in this temple, and in our time of trouble, he hides us in his pavilion, the secret place. We have an anchor, my friend, of our soul that is sure and steadfast. That's what Hebrews 6 tells us, which enters the presence behind the veil. That's that secret place with him. We have an anchor. When we anchor ourselves to the Lord, to the presence of God, when we come into that place, I'm also thinking of Psalm 91. 
flip over there. <laughs> oh, I love being with you guys. I hope this is speaking to you. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him I will trust. Surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. Oh, my friend, get a picture of that. His truth will be your shield and buckler. You will not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, of the pestilence that walks in darkness, or the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Even this, get this, a thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. Amen. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he will give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. And in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. That's the Lord speaking. I will set him on a high because he has known my name. And he will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. And with long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. That's our hope, my friend. Our hope is in the secret place of the Lord. It is dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. It is living and abiding in the shadow of the Almighty. We need to know what his word says. We need to get in his presence and hear his voice and let him wash over us that hope that anchors our heart, that anchors our soul so that we don't give up. We don't give up. We don't want to lose heart in the day of adversity. We want to believe we will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I love the admonition in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, where it says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. My friends, there can come, even in the midst of trouble, there can come a rejoicing. Rejoice always. This is the will of God. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. And in everything, give thanks. <laughs> you're not always giving thanks for everything, but you're giving thanks in the midst of everything. When I was going through some of the hardest times in my life, I started what I call my miracle journal. And this is just a spiral notebook. At the time, I think I had paid 10 cents for this at back to school special. So this is a beautiful time to pick up a spiral notebook. <laughs> but in this, I remember um, at the time, we, uh, my former husband was unemployed and uh, we were seeking God. We felt like, this was the Lord and that God wanted to do a miracle. And so in the midst of this, I didn't want to get into fear because fear tries to grip your heart when you're in a struggle, right? I wanted to be walking in faith. And I came across these verses about rejoicing always, um, praying without ceasing and in everything giving thanks. And I knew the principle of miracles. You get a miracle because you need a miracle. <laughs> we all want to walk in the miraculous, but we don't all want to have the struggles that it takes to get a miracle. You get a miracle because you need a miracle, right? Or someone around you needs a miracle. And so that is what I was praying for. I was praying for a miracle. We didn't have income. We didn't we needed things. I had young children. My kids were in middle school. I think they were around um, 10 or 12 years old. And every day we decided that first off we would pray without ceasing. 
And so I gathered other people whose husbands were unemployed and we began praying for one another. We began finding things to rejoice about. So every day in my miracle journal, I would write down the way I saw God move. This is from 2006. And um, I wrote down when meetings went well. I went down when there were interviews. I wrote down when someone prayed for our family and it encouraged my heart. I wrote down scriptures. I wrote down when I got a free cup of coffee at McDonald's. <laughs> I wrote down when my kids got free coats at the resale shop. I wrote down when someone provided free lunch for our children. I wrote down every kind word. I have notes and letters that people sent to me to encourage me. And I would I would look at these things and I would rejoice. Every night at dinner, instead of complaining about what we didn't have, we would rejoice over what God had done that day. We would pray and thank him. With thanksgiving, we would pray and seek him. And we would thank the Lord for how we'd seen him move and what was in our miracle journal. On exceptionally hard days, I'd get out the journal and I would read the ways God had worked in the past. And it would build my faith that God was with us. He hadn't left us. He hadn't forsaken us. I was not going to lose heart, but I was going to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Over the years, um, God did provide in that season and it became the most joyful season of of my life with my kids when they were home. And uh, then again, when I went through my divorce a few years later, I pulled out the miracle journal and I began writing down how God was providing, how he was encouraging my heart. <laughs> Here we go, 2012. And I began writing down all the different things when someone spoke someone something to me, when I received a hug at just the right time. It was a miracle to me. I wrote it down. When I had a bill unexpectedly get paid, I wrote it down. When things were provided when my kids got music lessons and a, a friend decided to take care of that. I wrote it down. When we got a discount on different things, I wrote it down and I rejoiced. I rejoiced always. I prayed without ceasing and I gave thanks in the midst of it. And this was something we would talk about at, at the dinner table. We would say, we would pull out the miracle journal. My kids knew that there were times they could, they could come to me and we would write down what they saw as the miracle of the day in the miracle journal. This is how we lived that season of our life and multiple seasons of our life where there've been hardships, where there's been hope deferred, where there's things that you're looking for the promise and you haven't seen it yet. My friend, don't give up hope. Continue to believe. Continue to seek the Lord where you see a glimmer of that hope and you can go, this is a glimpse of Christ in my day today. I am going to rejoice in the Lord. I am going to give thanks and I am going to continually pray and it will stir up the hope that is within you. It will stir up the hope because our hope is not in our circumstances. Our hope is in Christ and what he has promised. Our hope is in our eternity that is secure with him. Our hope is in the word of God and the presence of God. Our hope is found going into that secret place, knowing that when we are there, the presence of God is with us. We are connected and tethered to Jesus, our forerunner and our finisher of our faith. He is the one that is the, the beginning and the end of our faith is Jesus Christ. And hope is tethered to it and is the anchor in our soul to root us and ground us through those troubling times of life. If you have been in hope deferred situations today, I want to pray for you. I want to pray that the Lord would give you a joyful confidence in knowing he doesn't leave you. He doesn't forsake you. He is with you. I want to pray that he would give you eyes to begin to see the little miracles every day in your life, that you can rejoice, that you can know that he is with you, that he would give you scriptures that you can stand on and, and give you a sure place, a sure place, the word of God, a sure place, the solid rock, Jesus Christ, to be tethered and connected to throughout your journey, that you would be that house of prayer full expectation. When God speaks something to you, no one can take it away from you, my friend. 
No one can take it. I prayed that an expectation would be birthed within each one of my sisters tonight. I pray that they would they would experience a joy, a joyful confidence coming over them right now, that they would recognize that their hope is not in their circumstances. Their hope is in the faithful one, the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you, oh God, that you give us this hope for our soul, but it is connected to Jesus Christ. It is connected to the word of God and the presence of God. I thank you, Lord, that our hope is not in ourselves. It's not in if we can measure up or if we can pray enough, if if we can fast enough, if we can give enough, if we can do enough, our hope is in you. Give us eyes to see how you are moving. Give us eyes to be open. Enlighten our eyes to see the hope of our calling, oh God. Let us see what you're doing. Lord, where it's been blocked from us and we haven't been able to see you in the midst of the fog and the haze and the chaos, I ask for your light to come. As we read in Psalm 27, oh, you are our light. You are our salvation, oh God. Let us see your salvation breaking through. Let us see your light beginning to shine. Let the suns shine down into our life today and bring light into the situation. Let us see where you are moving. I pray for each one of my friends and sisters on this broadcast today that's feeling in that hope deferred situation where their heart just feels sick. They, they feel like they just want to give up. Lord, I thank you that they have not quit. I thank you that you have brought them to this broadcast tonight. I thank you that they are tuning their hearts to you. And I thank you that you are birthing a hope within them. You are giving them a hope. You are giving them a prayerful expectation that you are with them, that you have not left them, that they will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. I thank you that you haven't left them, but you are birthing that within them. I pray, oh God, for each one of my sisters, God, that you would give them someone that they could pray with, someone they could stand with, someone they could walk through this journey with, that they could rejoice with, they could weep with, and they could wipe each other's tears. I pray, oh Lord, that you would surround us with friends. I thank you, Lord, that you are that friend that sticks closer than a brother, but I also pray for friends in the natural who will stand with us, that will encourage us, that will be those Barnabases to us to come alongside and lift us up. I pray, oh God, that we would be those that for other people, that when we see our sisters, we see our friends, we see um, our dear sisters, struggling, that we would be those that would come alongside and encourage, that would give a word of hope, a sure word, a word from you, O oh God. I pray, Lord, that you would be with us and we would not miss our times of visitation in your presence, but we would allow ourselves to come before you. Lord, even in our heart sickness, we would come to you and we would allow you to wash us with the water of your word. We would allow you to refresh us with your presence. Lord, I think of the passage in Acts where you say times of refreshing are in the presence of the Lord. And Lord, those came out of repentance and confession. Lord, so we confess there are times where we just feel like all hope is gone. And Lord, we know that that is a lie and a tactic of the enemy. And we renounce that in Jesus' name. And we cry out, God, for your refreshing, that you would wash over us and wash away the lies of the enemy and replace them with those prayerful expectations, <laughs> that we would be your houses of prayerful expectation. We would be those who are hearing your word and believing you. And Lord, from that place, a joy would arise in us, a joyful confidence that the God who promised is faithful and he will do it. Lord, this is your will for us to rejoice always, to pray without ceasing, and in everything give thanks. I ask that you would birth a thankful spirit within us. Lord, we talk about it at Thanksgiving, but right now I pray, oh God, we would have Thanksgiving in August, that you would birth a thanksgiving spirit within us. You would birth a thankfulness, that we would see where you are moving. We would watch you and join you, and Lord, that joy would rise up in our hearts as we seek you, Jesus, as we learn 
learn to to minister to others and and then we watch how you're working in ourselves I thank you, Lord, for what you are doing in each one of my sister's lives. And I pray, Lord, that they would find that hope, that tree of life springing forth in them. Lord, as we started this in that verse, where the hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when it, the desire comes, it is a tree of life. And for those that fear the commandments, who, who, who honor your word, they will be rewarded for the law of the wise is a fountain of life. Lord, your word is that fountain of life to us and it turns us away from the snares of death. Oh Lord, we choose to plant ourselves. We choose to be like those trees planted by the rivers of living water, by those streams of living water out of Psalm 1. We choose to delight ourselves in the law of the Lord, the word of the Lord. We choose to delight ourselves in that. I thank you, God, for this, this time just to pray. And I pray, Lord, for my sisters. I pray you would meet each and every one of their needs. And Lord, I thank you for the needs that have come in. And Lord, we lift up some of these needs. First off, we lift up the ministry of International Women's Ministries. We thank you, God, for this opportunity to seek you on behalf of this organization. I pray that you would continue to be with each one leading. I pray you would be with Autumn and, and with um, each one that is, is serving faithfully on this board of directors and, and leading this ministry. I pray, oh God, that you would fill them with wisdom and knowledge. You would lead them, Lord, as they carry out these tasks for every mission leader. I thank you, Lord, for their commitment to you. I thank you for their heart to go wipe the tears of women. I thank you for their passion to lead people into your presence and to care for the needs of others, to get beyond themselves and see you and see you move. <laughs> oh, Lord, I ask you would strengthen them. You would bless them. I ask your protection over them, that you would keep them in all of their ways, and you would go before them, that you would protect their families and their children. You would go before their marriages and protect their marriages, oh God. We thank you for each one connected with this ministry. We thank you for the partners, oh Lord, who have stood, who have prayed, who have given, and who have even gone to the nations and to minister to the women all around the world. I thank you, Lord, that you've given eyes to see, eyes, us eyes to see those that others are not seeing and to love them back to life. Lord, where they have had hope deferred, you have given us the opportunity to come along and, and uh, help be those fountains of life to them, that tree of life, to lead them to the tree of life, which is Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray for Pastor or the missionary Stephen Tolman in Mexico. And Lord, we think of the surgery he recently had to remove an impaction on his intestines. Oh God, I ask you would be with him and you would comfort him. You would heal his body, Lord, from this surgery, this long surgery and remove the pain in Jesus' name. I ask, oh God, you would continue to remind us to pray for Stephen and Lord, that we would stand with him. Lord, I cry out for your healing. I thank you for this person who has dedicated his life to you and to serving others. I pray, Lord, you would strengthen him and heal his body and give him peace in Jesus' name. I pray for the team that's headed to Indonesia in August. And Lord, I pray for pastors Chandra and Uriah. I pray, Lord, you would bless them indeed. You would give them all that they have need of in this, this time. I thank you for this team that has said yes, that's given you their yes. And Lord, I pray for them, that you would keep them strong, you would keep them healthy as they prepare, and then even as they go, that you would give them safety and good health as they are gone and overseas. I ask your protection over them. I ask that you would you would guard their hearts and their minds, and Lord, that they would have such an expectation from you and they would see it come to pass. I pray, Lord, for the women that will be touched through the women's conference. Lord, I pray that many would be strengthened, that there would be healings and miracles and salvations. I ask God for you to come and move on behalf of these women in the Indonesia. And we cry out too for the medical mission that will be done. Lord, draw the women there. Draw the women there 
who are believers, but draw the women there who are not, that they might hear the hope of Jesus Christ. We cry out for those that will be coming, even the Muslim women and the women of other faiths that will be coming to this medical mission. May they encounter the Lord Jesus Christ. May they receive dreams and visions and just sense your presence through this team. I ask that they would be touched. I ask that you would release miracles and healings, that signs and wonders would follow the preaching of your word. I ask, oh God, you would confirm that you are the God of all gods and that you are a God who loves your people. You are a God who desires relationship. You are not willing that any perish, but all come to repentance. And we cry out for that in this area of Indonesia, that the gospel will go forth with power. And I ask you would strengthen the women that are going and the intercessors who are praying. I thank you, Lord, for meeting every financial need for each of these opportunities and each of these outreaches. And Lord, we ask that you would do that. And Lord, we also pray for this outreach for the, um, John 317 ministry, Lord, that women would be restored and delivered and freed from addictions. I pray, oh God, that people, these women would come into complete freedom in their life as they, they set their hearts on Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, you came to deliver <laughs> those that were bound. You free those that are bound um, and even those that are in prisons, and sometimes those prisons are our own addictions, the things that we have allowed in. But Lord, you have come to set the captives free, and I ask God for freedom for these women, and I ask this in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for each woman that has, has tuned in here, and I pray, Lord, even for them, that, Lord, if there are healings that are needed in their body, I pray, oh Lord, and I just declare that Jesus the Christ heals you. I pray, oh God, that healing would spring forth suddenly in their bodies, that people would be delivered and set free, that tumors would be removed in Jesus' name, and healing will come in Jesus' name. I thank you for sight, Lord, where people haven't been able to see clearly. I thank you that you're giving eyes to see. <laughs> um, I don't know if that's in the natural or in the the spiritual but lord i thank you for the eyes to see we're just thank you for both i thank you that you came to heal blind eyes and you healed blind eyes and um you allowed people to see and i thank you god for the gift of sight that you are releasing in jesus name i thank you god for freedom freedom from addictions uh freedom from addictions even of pornography and other addictions that have people bound and in shame lord i just speak shame off of you i thank you lord that there is forgiveness through jesus christ and there is freedom for every sin there is freedom from every addiction and i thank you whom the sun sets free is free indeed and i thank you god for your freedom that is coming to women all over the world tonight i thank you for your freedom i thank you that there is hope in jesus christ and we anchor ourselves to you lord that he who began a good work in us is faithful to complete it i thank you for the good work you have began in my sisters and lord those that feel like am i ever going to see the end he's faithful my friend he is faithful my friend i ask for the faithfulness of god to just come upon them and Lord, that they would know that you were with them. And I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, my friends. I hope you have a fantastic week. And again, the, there is um, someone here encouraging you every Monday night at 7 p.m. So please tune in and get involved with International Women's Ministries. God bless you, my friends. Have a fantastic week.